information and technology risk definitions and concepts. Of course, this is very high level. This is introductory. What I want to do is really hit some of the key points and definitions and basic concepts with you to prepare you for some other future, more deep dive courses we have in this video series. <laughs> One of my favorite ways to explain information and technology risk is through this slide. It explains an organization that I was a part of several years ago. We were a managed service provider. But the problem was this. We were so focused on cybersecurity that we failed to recognize what other risks there were to our business. We were overly compliant with respect to security protection that we couldn't operate effectively as a service provider. Now, there were many hidden INT risks that we didn't consider, and these weren't hidden. They were right in front of our faces. Things like service level management, relationship management, resource allocation, of course, many things you see on this slide. My CEO slapped his hand on the table and said, why are we going out of business as the most secured company of the, in the world? We're passing our audits, but our audit only focused on cybersecurity. Now, that's not audit's fault. That was our issue as an enterprise to not understand the full spectrum of information and technology related risks because we only focused on one area so we could not perform as an enterprise. So therefore, some things I want you to understand at the very basic level, few definitions of information and technology risks as well as other types of risks that are out there. And I really want you to understand the distinction between risk governance and risk management. Of course, this will be very high level. I have more deeper dives into this in other courses out there. But this is really just an overview of some key definitions and concepts that I think are important for you to understand. We'll start with just defining information and technology risk. Now, what this really is, it's a combination of the probability or the likelihood of an event and its consequence. What could go wrong? How can this risk harm my organization? It's the business risk associated with adoption and the use of information and technology. Now, they're not always IT related risks because they may have an effect on a business goal. So it might now become a business risk instead of an IT risk. Now, of course, this could be negative or positive. Negative risk says, Hey, if this risk becomes real, nothing good's coming out of this. A positive risk says I may be making an investment. If this investment wins, I win big. If it loses, all I lose is my investment. My personal definition of a risk is this. It is an event that, if it occurs, has an effect on enterprise goal achievement. Of course, you might find multiple different versions and definitions of risk out there, but for the purposes of this presentation, I think this is one of the best to go with. Of course, we need to talk about the different types of risk. You see here on the left-hand side, we have starting with strategic risk. This is risk that involves an enterprise's future business plans and your strategies. This could be things like planning for expansion, uh, going into new markets, and those types of things. Operational risk. Now, this is the potential for losses caused by things like inadequate systems or controls, human error, mismanagement, and of course, natural disasters. Most organizations put IT risk under operational risk. You may have portfolio risk. That's the risk to information and technology achieving its objective of optimizing business value, and of course, program and project risk. It's involving the procurement acquisition or funding, as well as the risk concerning the people, the technical aspects, costs, schedule, resources of our projects. But one of the important things I really wanna point out here is that there is a single substrate to each one of these, and that's called INT, or information technology related risks. Because if you think about it, Information and technology risks can affect every one of these risk types. So therefore, why is it that we in organizations just look at IT related risk and we say IT, that's your risk to manage when if it becomes real, it has an effect 
on organizational goals. So it's good for us to take a look at a couple of key definitions. Now, these are a few that I think are important to know. Other courses will take these definitions and many more and dive deeper into their uses, but these are some key ones to understand at this point. First, we have risk ownership. Now, this is the person or the business unit who ultimately is affected by the risk. Now, notice it's not always IT because if that IT related risk becomes real and a business unit goal is affected, that may no longer be an IT owned risk. A threat is anything that's capable of acting against one of my assets or one of my goals that could result in harm. This could be uh, an object or this could be human. A vulnerability. What ha what's happening here is the threat is trying to exploit what are my vulnerabilities. This could be a weakness in my design, my implementation, right, my operations, or even my internal controls. We have inherent and residual risk. Inherent risk says, hey, it's normally high for most IT areas because this is saying we have not put any risk responses or controls in place. And here's what could happen if we don't treat that risk. If we choose to treat that risk, what's left is what we call residual risk. It can be used by management to determine which areas might require more controls and those types of things. And finally, risk appetite and tolerance. Risk appetite is the amount of risk on a very broad level that my organization is willing to accept in pursuit of its mission. And tolerance is the degree of uncertainty. What's the wiggle room? Is there an acceptable level of deviation based on certain types of scenarios that might happen? Next, we move on to the risk governance and risk management processes. I think it's important for you to understand that there is a distinction between risk governance and risk management. Now, first, let's talk on risk governance. Now, what we're trying to do is ensure that the IT related enterprise risk does not exceed the appetite and the tolerance levels we talked about just a few minutes ago. It really has three parts to it. Number one, we want to evaluate risk. When we evaluate risk at the governance level, we're understanding the organization and its context related to INT risk and, of course, determine the risk appetite and tolerance levels. When we direct risk, we're directing the integration of the INT risk strategy and the communication plans into risk management practices and operational activities. And finally, when we monitor, monitor the extent to which the risk profile is managed within the risk appetite and tolerance thresholds, and of course, report any risk management issues to the board or the executive committee. Down on the risk management side, of course, we want to continually identify, assess, and reduce INT risk within the tolerance level set by the enterprise. So this includes, first, we scope that risk. We understand the organizational strategies and objectives, the core processes, the structures, as well as INT services, infrastructure, and applications. We want to determine the boundaries of the risk universe here. For example, are you looking at the enterprise? Are you looking at IT? Are you looking at a project? Or are you looking at a specific technology? Then we identify risks. We establish a method on collecting risk-related information. I'll call the result of this something called a risk scenario. We then analyze and assess that risk using multiple internal and external risk factors. We analyze and assess risk using impact and likelihood so we can reduce the scenarios to a manageable set. We determine our responses to those risks. Determine the appropriate risk responses, such as avoid, accept, transfer, and of course, mitigate. And finally, we monitor those risks. We maintain the risk profile by keeping the inventory of known risks. We're monitoring things called key risk indicators, and we're identifying emerging risks. Of course, we report the results of this to all affected stakeholders. More on this in other courses in this e-learning set but this gives you a really high level of how we have a distinction between governance and management when it comes to risk. 
I hope you've enjoyed this short video on risk definitions, risk concepts, and of course, risk governance and risk management. You know, this was very high level. Other courses in this e-learning library take these concepts and dive deeper into them to help you understand how you can take these things and apply them at work tomorrow.